Let me begin by saying how disappointed I am we are not discussing more pressing matters. Families hit hard by the cost of living crisis, businesses struggling with energy bills, or the in emergency engulfing our health service. And we should be discussing our NHS today, as my colleagues Donald Cameron, Sharon Dowie and Jackson Carlo have all highlighted. Ian Kennedy said that many doctors remain to be convinced that the Scottish Government's practical response matches up to the huge scale of the problems the NHS is facing. It's no wonder, given that the Scottish Government have lost focus and instead they are once again forcing us to discuss their grievance agenda, something we have seen from every nationalist speaker to a lesser or greater extent today. Sarah Boyack spoke about a new way forward in the work of Gordon Brown and Alex Cole Hamilton in a passionate speech uh, outlined how the Scottish Government are out of touch with reality and how the Greens have traded environmentalism for nationalism. But let me be clear, I believe in democracy that Scotland has the right to decide on its future, but the question of independence has been settled and the will of the people must be respected. I think going forward there's much that Jackson Carlow can offer this parliament and indeed Scotland with regards to the way forward. But the obvious question is why did the SNP keep ignoring the referendum we had in 2014? Alistair Allen. Alistair Allen. I thank the member for giving way and he, he reflected on the fact that Jackson Carlow had indicated the way forward. As I recall, <laughs> Jackson Carlow said that the way forward was uh, through making these arguments at Westminster. Does, he, does the member acknowledge that for the last few elections, the overwhelming number of people, majority of people that Scotland has sent to Westminster uh, have been of my point of view and not his, and will he not come to acknowledge that at some point? Yes. Morris Golden. Uh, I think this, the, the point that the nationalists are struggling with is that if a councillor at a local government election has it in his or her manifesto that they will increase income tax, they cannot do it because the institution to which they serve doesn't have the power to do so. The referendum in 2014 was free and fair. That saw Scotland vote, I'd like to make some progress, that saw Scotland vote decisively to remain part of the United Kingdom and that, according to the SNP at the time, removed the question of independence for at least a generation. So why won't the SNP respect the members, results? Members, excuse that? me, Mr. Golden. Could members give Mr. Golden the respect of listening while he's speaking? Please continue. Thank you, Presiding Officer. So why won't the SNP respect the result of that referendum? Let me give you the answer. It's because they lost. They've never been able to accept that, so they want to keep running referendums until they get the answer they like. It makes their talk of democracy, mandates, and respecting the will of the people so horribly hollow. Such as the SNP's intent to overturn the 2014 decision, they even took to the courts trying to force through another referendum, wasting more than a quarter of a million pounds of taxpayers' money before the Supreme Court unanimously ruled against them. Let's be clear here, the Scottish people don't want another <coughs> referendum anytime soon. An Ipsos Mori poll last month found that just 35% of people supported a referendum in 2023. Thwarted by the courts and with the public opinion against them, the SNP now want to turn the next general election into a de facto referendum. The absurdity of the idea should be obvious to everyone. As the constitutional politics expert, Professor James Mitchell explained, there is no such thing as a de facto referendum. It's not for a political party to dictate the terms of an election. 
Presiding officer, the case for independence has never been strong. The SNP have no credible answer for why Scotland should leave the most successful political union in history. A union that benefits Scotland enormously from the 12 billion union dividend that allows Scotland to spend more on vital public services to the hundreds of millions being directly invested in local communities, from the shipbuilding jobs on the Clyde to the vast quantities of trade that flow freely between Scotland and the rest of the UK. Let's also remember that during the pandemic, the UK government protected almost a million Scottish workers and nearly 100,000 Scottish businesses. It was an enormous show of support for Scotland, both demonstrating the value of the union and also that we are at our best when we are united. The people of Scotland understand that, which is why poll after poll has shown the majority of Scots want to remain part of the United Kingdom. Uh, do I have time, President Officer? Stephanie Callaghan. I thank the member for taking the intervention. He's mentioned democracy, mandates, will of the people, and he's told us that the Scottish Government is out of touch. Does he really mean that the Scottish people are out of touch because they're the ones who voted for a referendum? Maurice Golden. Well, not according to your leader, Nicola Surgeon, who said that a vote for the SNP in 2021 was not a vote for independence. Perfectly clear. Incidentally, that's the same First Minister that says she detests you. hundreds of thousands of Scots, yeah. which is, in my view, a deplorable act from First Minister of Scotland. The First Minister if takes hardship facing families and tries Golden. to make it about independence, saying the cost of living crisis highlights, and I quote, the pressing need for independence. With this <laughs> obsession for independence above all else, is it any wonder so much has gone wrong under this SNP Green government? Education going backwards in international rankings, the worst drugs death rate in Europe, the worst A&E waiting times on record, an embarrassing approach to tackling climate change, and so many more failures. The debate today, presiding officer, has been a wasted opportunity to tackle those issues. The Scottish Government must stop acting like a pressure group for independence and more like the government it's supposed to be. Yeah.